Hello everyone, my name is Yogesh Punia and today I am going to accompany you to a whole new world of excitement, a whole new world of various phenomena that have a day to day life application in, in our life. Right from the, the balloon flying in the sky to the bird flying in the air and then the aeroplane you are following it. Right from the needle that we saw in the magnetic compass to the apple falling on the ground, everything in this nature follows a certain rule and when mankind wants to know what those rules are we follow a theory actually it's not a theory it's a simple a philosophy a philosophy based upon the innovative ideas a philosophy based upon the discoveries and a philosophy based upon the conciseness yes it is called the physics the physics of this world so today we are going to learn what is physics what are the basic elements of physics and then we will know what are the basic forces that are present in nature that make physics so enriched. So here we go. Many many years back there was a young man who was sitting in his apple farm or what you call an orchid. He was sitting in the afternoon and suddenly he saw an apple falling. Well as a common man thinks yes the apple was not raw it got ripe and that's why it fell. But then it was Newton and he thought, no, 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 the apple fell. It means there must be something that is making this apple to fall. And then he saw at the moon. And the first question, you know, what he asked to himself was, if the apple can fall to the earth, why doesn't the moon, why doesn't the sun? And then he started knowing all other things. He started going through whatever the other year phenomena in the same way happened. And then he said, Aha, there is something which is called gravity and gravity tends to attract each and everything to the earth. And then later he generalized that in all this universe, the only thing that binds all the planets, all the human beings and the earth are gravity. And thus he said, gravity is the basic what nature has given us. And so the physics is the study of the nature. Now, if we go for the meanings that we find in various dictionaries for physics, for example, if you go for Latin and if you go for Greek, even if you go for Sanskrit, they, they will say that physics is nothing but the study of nature. Well, actually, that's only a definition. Let's go into a real world example and then we might be able to see what really physics is. For example, I have a balloon. And if I fill that balloon with normal air while I am trying to blow air into it, I have got one balloon. And if I go to a balloon wala, the vendor who sells a balloon at the chow parties or any other places as you might have seen, he will use a certain gas. And if you don't hold that balloon with that string and if you leave it, it will go up in the air. As a child, I always wanted to know why? What is there special in that vendor's air that is making this balloon to go up in the air and mine, was, mine one was simply falling into the ground? Then perhaps my dad said, the air that that vendor is selling or is pushing into that balloon is lighter than the air that I am blowing into the balloon. I said, dad, what is this all about? He said, it's the nature and the nature is given by physics. So, right from the anxiousness of a simple child to the heavy duty motorcycles or the bikes or even the trains, cars and aeroplanes, physics is all around. You can't even imagine a single second of your life without physics. Even if now I'm talking to you, the sound waves are propagating and then from the recorder, decoder, there are so many instruments that are only possible because of this physics, the, the branch of physics that is known as electronics, that you are able to communicate my ideas with you and your ideas here with me. Now, now since we know that physics is all around, so we must know what is 
physics actually what are the forces that makes physics so fascinating so good and so close to our humanity or to the everyday life well basically speaking there are so many wide range of forces that are present in our day to day life but the scientists the brightest mind in this world they have classified various forces that show in various ea phenomena into four categories now if you go through through these categories the first category is the universal relation of between the celestial bodies the universal relation between why the moon is not falling onto the earth or why the apple is falling onto the ground yes it is the theory of gravitation we are not going into the numerical aspect of theory of gravitation we are just going to think for a second what are the qualitative aspects of theory of gravitation that is so important in our day to day life well practically speaking the range of theory of gravitation or the range of force of gravitation is infinite then what does it mean it means even if i am holding this pen the force between this pen and my hand or the force between this pen to the ground or this table is there but there is a force between this pen and the moon well you might be shocked right then you must ask why it is not getting up there well it is simply because the gravitational force is dependent upon mass so if there is higher the mass higher will be the gravitational force because it is a inverse square law theory so there are so many factors there are so many parameters that's why if i am keeping this pen here there are so there are mainly three type of forces if i were if i were categorized in the form of gravity is happening the force between this pen and the ground the force between the moon and this pen if you take into consideration although it is really very negligible and the force with which i am holding this pen so it's all together neutralized and you see with this pen sitting here alone now moving on to the second force actually when we said that a wire is having some current the current is flowing through it no one actually paid attention to it why it is happening so but there was a guy and he said okay this is a wire and the current is flowing through it but wait i have a magnetic needle here which is showing some deflection that means there must be some relation between electricity and magnetism and then he started throwing all his experiments and then he say yes there is a relation between the electricity and the magnetism and he said whenever in a conductor or if you say a wire an electric current is flowing it produces a magnetic field around it that is if i am holding this pen and suppose it is a conductor and if i am giving electric current to it so then the current will flow into it and around this there will be a magnetic field produced that you can verify by having a magnetic needle here or even a magnetic compass here this theory which unified the electricity and magnetism is known as electromagnetic theory well there was a slight addition into this theory when maxwell said maxwell he was a very brilliant physicist from britain he said that light that means light which is the basic thing with which we are able to see who i am or who the other person is is also electromagnetic in nature so in a brief you can say that electromagnetism is only limited to electricity and magnetism it also includes optics now let us move towards the third force and perhaps the most fascinating and the strongest of all forces yes that is the nuclear force you might have heard that there was a guy named rutherford and he did an alpha particle scattering experiment and he said the matter is made up of nucleus protons neutrons and all those theories they were developed after this discovery he said that there is a positive charged nucleus at the center of an atom that binds now there was a question because if you go for electricity and the electrostatic effect you might ask but rutherford is wrong or means the notion of the nucleus is wrong because 
electromagnetism says that if two charges are of same magnitude uh, for suppose both of them are positive they must bear a repulsion and in nucleus is positively charged it means it is having protons and protons so how can they bind together as a whole unit it should go that one proton should say i am going and one should say i am going but there is a force superior to them yes the force which is superior to the electrostatic repulsion between the protons that force is known as the strong nuclear force yes the strong nuclear force is the force that gels all the protons together that makes them bind together and is till date and it is going to be the most powerful force that has ever been observed in an atom and the best thing about this is there is also a weak nuclear force well the weak nuclear force is a bit weaker than the electromagnetism force and the nuclear force but is stronger than the gravitational force that is it happens when an atom disintegrates and gives a beta decay and an electron which it gives in a beta decay right so now in this episode we have discussed what is physics what was the need of physics actually the need of physics was only to give a reason to a certain thing why the apple is falling why the birds are flying or even the airplanes are flying and while going through this journey of questioning and then answering reasoning we got a whole new perspective which is far richer than anything you can even imagine just imagine a world where you can see the things that if a car is moving yes yes there is an engine which is giving a thrust to it or which is giving a power to it so it means for every single phenomena in our life we have a basic reason to say this is happening because of this this is the realm of physics this is the amazingness of of this exciting theory of this exciting philosophy that has enriched our generations now let us summarize it we have known what physics is how it was needed for the mankind and then we went through the forces the three major forces that are in our universe precisely the gravitational force that binds the celestial bodies by the their attraction would depending upon the inverse square law and the their respective masses and then we went through the electromagnetism the force that happens when an electric field is created and a magnetic effect is seen or vice versa is also there and then we came to know about what is that peculiar force in a nucleus that binds the protons in a nucleus because if it had been there there would have been no nucleus and there would have been no life because we all are made up of atoms and atoms are made up of nucleus and then we knew what a weak nuclear force is and how it is there now if i go for an order of increasing strength the weakest of all but the most significant is the gravitational force then we have the weak nuclear force and then we have the electromagnetism force and then we have the god of all yes the basic thing that binds our life together that is the strong nuclear force so now today we have learned what physics is and what are the basic forces that are present in our nature in the next episode we shall be having some assistance from the measurements and the units that we take into account while explaining so many phenomena and there we will see what is the importance of measurement the precision and the units in the whole new world of physics which is the law of nature thank you mm -hmm.